Holger Jorgensen. I was born 19, January 1927 at uh, Haycock, Alaska. My first involvement when the war broke out, I wanted to join the Territorial Guard, but at the time they said I was too young, so when I turned 15 in 1942, I told them I was 16 and I volunteered and was in, inducted and signed up for the Guard on February 2nd, 1942. When we first joined, I joined in Haycock, and then in the uh, spring of 1942, they brought us into Nome to put us on uh, different jobs that were attached to the federal government that was working and put us to work in what was called a defense, defense department. And that's the jobs they would get us and then they started building a runway in Nome in the spring of 1942 so we all took jobs on with the construction company building the two runways. They built airports in Nome and the first one came in operation in fall of 42, and the other one came in operation in fall of 43. And they were using, mostly those airports were flying lend lease airplanes to Russia from the United States and Nome was our st the stopover point where the Russians would ferry them from Nome over to Russia. Well, we got all World War I uniforms. We all re received a 30 6 rifle and uh, all the clothing and everything else that they had in the supply room. They had mummy sleeping bags and raincoats and anything you, you might need, but they're all World War I material. And they were good. We liked them because they were 100% wool, the pants and the shirts. And in the winter time, snow doesn't stick normally to hard woven wool, so you could just shake your pants and the snow would just come off of them instead of sticking to your clothes. Most of the Native guys volunteered and were accepted into the Alaskan Scouts because this now we're coming into them in 1945 and a spring of 45 and a lot of the uh, military that was in the guard then, some of them were coming up for discharge and we were filling the slots that that uh, older people that were in there were now being discharged in the latter part of 45 and 46. All of them were discharged except the ones that extended and wanted to stay in the military. So we had some of that extended in the Alaskan scouts that, that wanted to stay in service. And so we wound up with the first sergeant that continued on in the, in the scouts. So he was our first sergeant there when we all, he never did take a separation. Mm. Sergeant Story. When we went into the Alaskan Scouts, we were all given a 24-hour pass 
in any place we went. In other words, we weren't restricted. And uh, the MPs got kind of used to the Alaskan Scouts because they knew, after a few times checking us out, they pretty much knew who the Alaskan Scouts were. Our camp was called Fish Camp. So our duties were around our own operation. We would build sleds and boats and take, put up dog feed and take care of our dogs. That was our main purpose if we were in camp and not out mapping and stuff. The ones that didn't go out, they stayed there and did the fishing and, uh, and building the, the, the boats and uh, stuff we needed to use. But normally in the springtime, we did all the fishing before we went out to the mapping, especially the king salmon. We were always there, all of us were, to put up the king salmon for the dogs and ourselves. In fact, it was mostly all checking areas to either build roads that they wanted to build roads through different areas in Alaska and the ones that were on the coast, we sounded the oceans for air, uh, military aircraft, uh, uh, military uh, port, port landings for ships. So we sounded the areas that were deep enough for them to come up to the beach with their ships to offload or the areas they wanted to offload. So usually about four or five of the dog teams would be doing that in different areas they'd give us. And then the other three dog teams were usually inland from, from the ocean areas to find out where they wanted to build roads over ground to different areas. We had Willie Ryan from Unicleet and Philip Hundor from Nulato and me from Haycock or Koyuk, whatever you want to, that's where I was from. So, and what we were doing was uh, sounding the beaches along the ocean off the beach to see where the water was deep enough to bring in uh, military ships that could get up fairly close to the uh, beach line without having to anchor so far out. And that was our job. We were traveling between uh, Shishmarap and Deering. Was uh, normally with the load we had on there it would be a three-day trip because there's quite a few miles between Shishmarap and Deering, and uh, no broken trail. There's uh, was no real dog team trail between the two because. There was n not much reason to travel between those two villages with dog team, but they would occasionally run there. So we we left Shishmarap, and we were out a day when the storm came up, and we traveled till dark, and then we set camp, and uh, we uh, were there two days before. We, move camp just in the open tundra. It was blowing snow and so we were there at that camp three nights and two full days. And then when finally the storm was over, we continued on to Deering from there and took us two more days to get from from where we broke, where we set up camp in the storm after it cleared up, there was two more days before we got into Deering. And then the rest of the trip was 
fairly normal. We didn't have any long runs. The next long run we made from there was from Candle into Koyuk, which was uh, 70 miles. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did that stretch in uh, two days. I wanted to fly an airplane when I saw my first airplane when I was five years old. And uh, I was in the Territorial Guard when I took my first lessons in 1943. I was 16 then. And uh, I was able to buy my own time and learn how to fly with a little flying school in Nome. And it was uh, $10 an hour with an instructor, but they never took us up more than 15 minutes. It was $2.50 for 15 minutes because they had so many students that that's all they could give you because they had them lined up and a lot of times they only had one airplane. So. We would stand in line waiting to go take our 15 minutes. And there was not only uh, civilians trying to learn how to fly, all these military people that hit there in 1942 in the spring, a lot of the military people, they wanted to learn how to fly. So with one airplane, 